how do you convert your people from IG to become actual customers? Like somebody likes your content or somebody uh, would like to comment or whatever it is, right? Somebody engaged with you somehow. How do you take that from being just somebody who like, shows up and you know waves to hello to actually becoming a customer and so this is the process that i walked joe through on this hot seat call and i i get into a lot of detail here that i very rarely have ever done before the specific process to engage them in a conversation and convert them that is working like crazy for us right now so have a listen uh we go into um into very tactical detail and i think it'll help you a lot if you I've gotten a little bit of engagement on IG, but it hasn't quite converted to customers. This one is for you. All right. So, Joe, you're up, man. Um, you know, we spoke a while ago, a short while ago. I don't remember exactly yeah, how long ago it was. I but don't know what the date was, but about a month ago, I think. Yeah, Maybe it was more. a month a bit ago. Um, and it seems like you've made some moves on it. So I'm curious to hear kind of kind of what you've done. But but real quick, for people who don't know you yet, just just fly through kind of who you are, who you serve. Oh, uh, yes. So we have some Yeah, content. so... Uh... Yep, my name is Adrian Gambino. I'm a physical therapist and strength coach. Uh, mainly, I serve um, those who struggle getting back to the fitness side of things, uh, pretty much due to, to chronic pain. Cool. And then, um, as far as our last conversation went, um, so I have been came with a couple new um, lead magnets yep. that seem to be doing okay. Um, and then I've been using that question, especially even in the in DMs when people uh, respond to whatever the call to action is to ask for it. Um, what are you looking to achieve with this? Um, which starts a lot of conversations that way. Um, so I think that's all been going pretty well. Um, but really I think kind of where I am now is I still doesn't feel like the, the growth is there and that's kind of, been a, a goal of mine for a while and it feels like the numbers just always kind of stay stagnant in a sense yeah. between people who unsubscribe and those who do subscribe um so i guess uh i mean i have a whole lot of questions about email marketing in general but i guess this one would be around um how to grow it at a, at a faster speed besides just creating a whole bunch of things and hoping that instagram uh will, will drive enough new leads that way yeah I mean, the first thing to say is that Instagram is a very, 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 very bad medium for email list growth. Mm -hmm. Instagram has done a phenomenal job. I think I, I basically feel like Meta just learned their lesson from Facebook uh, and they shut down a whole bunch of stuff and created a whole bunch of rituals of ways that people create or use Instagram, whereby Instagram has done, just done a really good job keeping people on Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's created the usage patterns are such that people basically never click on links. And uh and it's not just that they're like annoying to find and, and click on and then they open up in Instagram's like crappy little browser. It's just like mm -hmm. people don't do it. So not to say that you can't grow an email list from Instagram, but you're always gonna struggle if Instagram is like your primary hmm. way to grow. In. So I think what you're doing is fine. Well, let me, let me pull up so other people can see. Um, let me just, you guys can see my other screen here. Uh, so I think what you're doing is fine. You know, you, you're, you're putting things like this is your sort of viral post from last week. Right. Um, mm -hmm but not sure what to do from a movement standpoint, send me a DM, DM and I'll send you a free mobility routine. So what are you doing when they send you a DM there? Yeah, so in that particular case, it's been, I, I give them the resource um, at the top. So it's the link um, with a, you know, a little hello message. And then I'm asking that question, what are you looking to accomplish with this um, resource? And then this way it just opens up conversation from there. So they send you a DM. Correct. Yeah. So on this post particular, I probably had like 30, 40 people respond to it, um, asking for the resource. I was actually, um, I think not too many people actually put their email in, but it, it has opened up, you know, quite a few conversations. So at least that was positive from it. Right. And, and you're doing the same thing on a bunch of them. I've noticed like, yeah, that's pretty much the call to action on almost all, all my posts now. So we can get into the nitty gritty of like 
how to make this more useful and then how mm -hmm. to actually use your stories to get a lot more out of it. Uh, like my story last week, I did one on uh, uh, I'm promoting like podcast episodes largely with the story, but it also starts DMs. And I put one out last week that had uh, over 2000 responses to it. Uh, so our team was a little bit overwhelmed, as you can imagine. <laughs> But um, let me see if I can, I might not be able to get into the things on desktop. I don't actually really know how to use the insights, but um, get out of the way, Zoom. Uh, add a profile, view, archive. Does anybody know if I can get into the insights through here? Uh, professional account, settings, privacy, view, archive. Oh yeah, I think this will show you what we need to show. But this has been working well for me, and you could do it to an email list as well. The stories I found have been much more effective than the actual posts. The posts are good, and we'll talk about them. But this one here um, had about 50,000 reach and had over 2,000 responses, and it was just a single slide. Mm -hmm. But it's a very simple formula that I've used multiple times so at the top i just called out who it was for i don't normally do that but for this one i felt like i needed to and i'm starting to get a lot of people following my page who don't work in the industry which is fine but some sort of question or like really sticky statement at the top and i can send you this too but some sort of question or sticky statement at the top called out in a color <clears throat> and then um again just like why is this important right now? Why do I have some sort of unique way to show you this or learn from this or whatever? And then what is the thing I'm going to give you? Right, I recorded a podcast episode with the 13 skills you must have or you'll be left behind. And then just a very quick call to action to apply to the story and I'll send you whatever, the thing, two things. And then I just have in the same color as the top, I have the call to action again. And so I'll show you another example of it where um, this one didn't. Um, that one didn't convert as well. That one did fine, but. You can see it's the same kind of formula, right? Stop working mm -hmm. on your business. This one was just a little bit too wordy, but it's the same type of formula and I can send you these, but these are getting huge responses and like, they're not fancy. Mm -hmm. um, let me find the first one that I did that got it. The pricing one. Uh, got a got a crazy response. Yeah, this. This one had about as many responses as the AI one. This one had close to 2,000 responses too. Raising prices is both, oops, scary and necessary. Inflation was 7% last year. So again, like some sort of headline. Why now? This one, I don't even give any social proof. Just like your prices have to go up. Like, like you know, you have to do this. Uh, and then podcast episode, how to do it. And then here's what I'm going to send you. And I do this for a podcast, but you could do this with, with a resource. I think we need to better name your resources, uh, which we'll talk about. But it's that kind of idea in the stories. Mm -hmm. And then you could literally just copy and paste this as your call to action at the end of your post. Like, I think your calls to action at the end of your post need to stand out way more and need to hit a lot harder. Um, how do you feel about those stories? Because how many, how many, uh, how many things do you have now? Uh, how many content upgrades do you have now? As far as um, free resources and stuff. Yeah. How many ebooks and stuff? Uh, I think four or five that I go through regularly with people, um, throughout my account. So what are the topics? Uh, one is revolved around golf being a warm up, uh, like warm up for golfing. 
Um, there's a total body and mobility routine. That one tends to do the best. There's the low back ebook. Um, there is a just a mobility class. Okay. And, and then I think the those one. are the four. Um, there is not an ankle one. So the ankle one is involved in one of the mobility ones. I saw you were promoting something about ankles the other day. Yeah, it was just like if there's like a particular topic I'm talking about, I just tell them to respond with that body part to start a conversation. Yeah, okay, okay, but yeah. it's the same, but it's the same ebook. Okay, so you basically have three topics. You've got general warm up, mobility, and low back. You've got two mobility mm -hmm. resources, but but you've got effectively three topics. Sure. Uh, okay. So let's workshop this a little bit. Then you cool to do that? Yeah. So what's the biggest, so for the golfing warm up, what's the biggest, what's like something that somebody tells you, like either a line that people actually use or something that like jumps out where the minute people hear it, they're like, yeah, should I need that? Uh, probably uh, either feeling stiff or painful at the, the start of their rounds, like their, their first tee shots. So stiff when you step up to the T. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially those those first ones, because typically people feel better. Um, some people feel better um, as their rounds go on, but usually okay. because they no one warms up, no one does anything prior, and everyone so, has some sort of issues when they move. So that's it. So golfers at the top, similar to mm -hmm. I did that with the AI, like golfers, um, are you stiff when you step up to the T? Question mark in that in the highlight whatever color you want to highlight it and then is there some stat or something like that that's just like how many people above a certain age get injured playing golf like something that because uh, i imagine it's probably pretty obvious it's probably pretty appalling <laughs> uh, yeah it is yeah yeah so what's that stat like okay like is there something where it's just like 20 percent of men over the age of 40, like injure themselves playing golf every year. <laughs> Some. Um, whatever that stat is, mm -hmm. that's the next line. And then just like, you can, or, or, or like, the best way to avoid it is a proper golf warm up. is a proper golf warm up and then it's just like uh respond with uh golf and i'll send you what what's involved in that um so it's uh resource that kind of explains you know some of the you know uh, philosophy behind warm-ups and how to design one that's effective and then there is an actual um warm-up routine that they can follow videos too yes um how long does a routine take mm, shouldn't take more than five ten minutes and you one five minute warm-up routine five minute golf warm-up routine two demo videos and then just like dm golf for the links and that's it so at the top you have golfers then you have your headline stiff when you step up to the t do you feel stiff probably stiff when you step up to the t it needs to be pretty short and I don't know, I mean, you tell me whether the word stiff is like a good word to use or whether there's a different word that they use, but. Uh, no, I think, I mean, it's a, I think it's a good word to, it's a common pain point for, for people being stiff, tight. Um, I try not to use pain too often, but pain, uh, yeah. more painful. Well, you're, 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 you're hitting on the pain part a little bit later on. So that's fine. Um, and then whatever that whatever that stat is, like X percent of people get injured playing golf. Ideally, uh, like like if you have people over a certain age, um, 
then that might hit harder. You know, mm-hmm. I think, I think, I think if you probably look at the stats, once you get over like 35 or 40 years old, it probably goes up pretty significantly. And that's probably your ideal client anyway, because they're going to mm-hmm. be people who are going to have more money. So that might be a good way to look, but, but it would just depend on how the data looks and right. who you want to be working with. Um, and then uh, the best way to avoid it is with a proper golf warm up. respond with golf and I'll send you whatever right the, the a five minute golf warm-up routine and demo videos okay uh, and so good. you do that as a story and then you know do like like this this meme is good you know what most people think their lower back needs you could do the same type of thing for golfing it's like how most people feel when they step up to the tee mm-hmm. and i don't know just find some like get like the robot from uh Mm -hmm. wizard of oz or something like that right (laughs) right i couldn't believe that this thing i I like i made this thing and i was like ah this is probably not gonna do well i was like i didn't even center the font on the top uh and i posted it anyway and i was like i don't even understand but look at look at like dr spencer nadalski's stuff as an example of this type of content he has a he has a meme almost always that makes some sort of a point and then um, and then he goes into detail in the caption of like what you need to know about it. And he's built up a big following as a result of it. Like, you know, how people track their calories without an app. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just, whatever is common, like whatever is trending, he's so fast on it. Like if there's like a Super Bowl meme or something like that, he'll just like, He'll just like jump on it. Um, but yeah, you could do this for golf. And that's the meme. And literally your entire caption is this exact same call to action. That's just copy and paste it. And you'll get way more responses. Mm-hmm. Um, Oops. And I mean, it's the same more or less for the other stuff too, right? Like it's the same more or less for the other, uh, for your other guides, for the mobility guide and for the right. back guide. I, I would say it's the same thing. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if your entire feed needs to be like these types of memes um, in terms of list growth. I think it's good that you have these type, but you could also start them with a quick meme or something. If you find Mm -hmm. like, clearly this resonates with the audience. Like, like you could have started this video with a quick meme and then literally just like cut into the video right afterwards. Um, There was one that went viral last week that I saw. Have have you seen this, like um, uh, this NPC character like trend? When no. people are streaming and pretending to be NPC characters. Okay. All right. What uh, makes sense? No. People are basically just like pretending to do the trend and then like taking off a wig and being like, now here's what you know what need to know about the monetary system. And then they get like serious and present a topic. Uh, but it's just something to grab your attention at the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, how does that how does that feel in terms of kind of a more distinct way to get just to just to stand out more that you have this thing and like almost sell it a bit better. Yeah, no, I, I like this because I, I've done th- you know kind of like similar just like text block in um, in stories, and I've had some that have been um, really impactful in the past. But I, I like um, I think something like this will be a little bit more helpful. Um, I've always found that like the way you present things um, really does make a difference, and you know sometimes. I feel a lot of the times that I don't quite, I guess, get across some of the reasons why someone should, um, you know, take me up on a free resource or some really good deal, right? So I think something mm-hmm. like that could make a make a nice difference for me. Something I definitely play with for sure to see if uh, changes how people reach out to me. Yeah, and just follow. I mean, follow that formula. the The only other thing 
like what's the, what's your link and stuff oh yeah like you got a, like a gazillion links how many people click yeah any of these? i was talking to dre about it today and I'm, okay. we're gonna drop it to add two things in there yeah okay so that's cool so she's already on it um you know you could even like if you find that one of your one of these things hits harder you could even say like dm me for a free golf warm for a five minute golf warm up with videos like dm me the word golf for five minute golf warm up and you could just like you have space you could just put mm -hmm. it in here i mean i would like i don't know why do you need new york city to rally? right yeah no i get you like it's fine i just i put a little flag beside mine that's a canadian flag because i want people to know that i'm not from the united states uh -huh. uh, that's just like a jerky Canadian thing to do. But, <laughs> um, but I mean, you could put an American flag or whatever, but I, I, this is pretty prime real estate. Um, and you could, you could have a call to action in here to DM you, no problem. Right. If you know that one of those things works well, and then at least every time anybody hits your page, or if you have something go viral, it's there. And mm -hmm. you can also, once stuff goes viral like this, you can also edit it. Like the second that this thing started popping off, all that I would have done is I would have written something like what I just wrote here and put it straight at the top with like a green check mark to get your attention. And just left it there. I don't know if I'd start a post like that, but if something starts uh -huh. popping off and you know that this is popping off because of the picture, this isn't popping off because of your right. picture. Correct. Right. Um, I don't even think people cared about the comment, uh, the the caption based on the comments that that filtered through there. They did or they didn't. They did not. It was all yeah. most of it was like, no, this is exactly how I feel. Like this is exactly <laughs> what I need. You know, it, it's exactly how I need. But then, like, nobody is messaging you for the answer to it. Right. So that's a that's a pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good feedback that you haven't made a strong enough call to action in the, in the body of it. Yeah, man. Smack dab at the top. I was talking to somebody yesterday about, about all this stuff. And I was just like, I feel like I want to just put right at the top of my page and like a pin post be like, this is a business. I do hmm. not post for fun. <laughs> I post here because I want you to buy from me. Here is what I sell. <laughs> just like a pinned post at the top of Instagram. Like, I, you know, it's why are we, why are we beating around the bush? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to set that example too for other people to be like, you know, if you want to have a page for fun, that's cool. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I also don't think that we should uh, pretend that we're doing something that we're not like this is time right. that we could be spending with our family or on our own fitness or whatever right um so i think it needs to be very clear mm -hmm. exactly how to get in touch with you and, and dm you and stuff like that in terms of the actual growth of the email list like numbers i think what i'm saying will help i don't think it's going to make a massive change like sure. you're not going to get thousands of subscribers I think you'll start to inch up faster with it. But I mean, to be honest, like email list growth these days, like there's a lot of people who do referral programs and stuff, you know, convert kit these days has this like referral programs, like the, the, the quality of those emails are so shit that everybody brags about their high open rates and stuff. It's because nobody can track open rates anymore because of Apple's privacy. Hmm. So it's like, you don't actually have a 50% open rate. It's because Apple can't track you. And so it's a false reporting. The only the only metric that really matters in terms of like the quality of an email list is actually click rate, because that's what can be tracked accurately. Open rate basically means nothing uh, the, anymore. So um, when you look at the quality of those lists, it's pretty low. LinkedIn, Twitter are both much better sources for getting emails than Instagram is. But Instagram is way better to convert customers. So Pick your poison. I right. see. Uh, I know other ways to. Besides, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, paid. So pretty much is paid. Mm -hmm. Paid, right? You you have a you have a, a an opt-in bribe that really hits, or like this company that I'm going to invest in, we're going to create some like really crazy viral material, and I won't. 
tell you guys more about that offline. I don't want this to go on any kind of recording because it hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet, but super viral material and like a bunch of nostalgia. It's in, it's in the baseball uh, world. So like with like some of the most famous baseball players of all time type stuff. And, and so we'll create super viral material with them and we'll send like advertisements from their account to the viral material. Um, but that's a totally different ball game. But yeah, you could advertise to like an opt-in bribe for sure. Mm-hmm. If you find that one really hits, if you want to grow your list, but you're going to pay a lot per lead. And you got to make sure that you're converting those leads out of that um, pretty quickly. Like you'll probably be paying 15, 20 bucks per lead after you, after you like get the initial rush of people that are already like attentive to you and warm to you, you're probably going to pay 15, 20 bucks a lead. And so gotcha. if you're converting two to 5% of your leads into customers, do the math, right? You got to be generating hundreds of dollars per customer uh, in order to make that return back. Uh, or you do trades. Are there other mobility professionals? Are there other strength trainer professionals that have email lists that have good audiences? Well, you can do a trade with them to their email list and, and they promote your golf mobility routine and you promote something of theirs in your email or on your social media, right? Um, beyond that, I mean, building an email list is no secret. Mm-hmm. I do it through my books, but you don't have a lot of books on Amazon that sell. So no, I do I it do through not. my books. I do it through blog content. Mm. You can do it through guest posting on other stuff, but like not a lot of blogs and stuff like that that are really read to that extent in your market anymore. Um, like James Clear basically did it by syndicating his content all across like Business Insider and all those places, but you couldn't do that today. Mm-hmm. And now he's just so famous that so many people have read his books that they go to him, but... Um, couldn't replicate it so it's a slow it's a slow burn like there's not a lot of people who have who are actively growing email lists um that are in like call it coaching markets anymore that are putting a lot of money into paid there's some Mm -hmm. um but they're largely across twitter and linkedin if i'm honest but I don't know how much. Yeah, go ahead. I know some of these people, and I can tell you that your business is better than theirs. So they might have an email list of 100,000 people, and they might have what are LinkedIn followings of hundreds of thousands, but your business is better. So again, it's like, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. What do you prefer? I don't think either is better or worse. No, it's good feedback. I mean, it's just more of a, I, I know that when I do spear post or, you know, nurture that, you know, those people that are there that I can, it does drive in a good amount of income too. So yeah. I want to make sure that I'm not neglecting that modality, especially because Instagram, especially lately seems to be very hit or miss, you know, like <laughs> I have one, that post has 8,000 <laughs> likes and then post next to it has 60 likes, you know, like, yeah. so yeah. It's and, it's, uh, and it's seemingly random too. Yeah. It's yeah, because I could random. take content, you know, I could take content that I did a year ago and redo it exactly or just repost that. And, you know, one that may have had 2,000 likes back then, we'll get, you know, maybe 300 now, you know, like. Yeah. yeah I mean, look, my only goal using Instagram is to get people the heck off of Instagram as fast as humanly possible. And so what I'm just describing to you is is a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. My goal is largely to get them onto a podcast, to be honest. Um, I do push my email list, but not as much as my podcast. But but you could do exactly what I'm doing for the podcast to an email Mm -hmm. list. And I think you'll have a lot of success. Um, So write one of these for, I mean, put this one out for your golfers today. Literally put it in your story. See what happens. I'd I'd be interested to hear. Okay, yeah, I can do that. That's and then you'll be busy responding to DMs. But <laughs> uh, but but another thing to think about is like who else in your market has, you know, because because the nice thing about 
your platform is that you do have a bigger Instagram page. You do have an existing email list with a good amount of subscribers on it. Um, there are people who will definitely want access to your audience and, and you can be the one to offer a trade. Mm -hmm. So think of folks that might be really beneficial. And if you're the one initiating it, right, they're only going to trade with you because they're not taking the initiative. But you could potentially trade with somebody every week, and you could also potentially trade somebody an email blast to their list in exchange for a collaborative post on Instagram. Like if you find somebody with an email list with 10,000 people, but they have an Instagram of 5,000, you could say to them, yo, let's do a collab post on Instagram. I got 85,000. Um, send a send a blast on your email list, you know, telling people to go download this resource from me and to get on my list. Gotcha. So, so those, uh, when doing those trades, it can be either the actual product itself or free resource. I mean, I would go free resource if your goal is to grow your yeah, list. What, okay. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I list. thought too, but I think before mm -hmm. you said something about, uh, you know, the program or something like that. So I just clarify. I mean, you could, you could, but the goal is to grow your list. Yeah. I know if if okay. your goal is to grow your list, which it sounds like it is, but, uh, uh, you know, look at what they have and look at what they don't have. And uh, and you could potentially have multiple people in your market emailing about you at any given time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have to necessarily email back for them, right? You could do a collab post on Instagram, which just basically means an Instagram post that you're going to do anyway. You just call it a collab and put mm -hmm. the name on right. it too. Right. Okay. No, that's a good idea. I, I like that. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Thank you, Joe. Hey, John again, and thank you so much for listening to that hot seat. That was a hot seat from my mentorship where we help great coaches scale. If you are interested uh, in just exploding uh, your online coaching business, please go on Instagram, send me a DM that just says mentor and we'll have a conversation, see if it's right for you. If you're looking for another episode to listen to right now, I'm going to recommend you check out episode 99. This episode is called Make It Easy Before You Make It Hard. Walk before you uh, nail the easy stuff before you optimize. Converting content to clients is one example where intelligent people they just kind of have a way of making things way too hard and way too complicated. And I think you probably heard that uh, with that conversation with Joe. So you'll learn more about this kind of theory and philosophy and tactics of how to make it easy before you make it hard. And it never usually needs to be hard. So that's episode 99. Check it out. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thanks for being here.